Welcome back to the Think See Listen YouTube channel, where I give it to you raw and uncut and uncensored and unedited and unprofessional for the glory of God. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the only God. We are going to continue reading Love Your Enemies by... Hiram Monk Gregorios of Mount Athos. This is a beautiful little book filled with, filled with wisdom. We'll backtrack a little and just continue where we left off. The following incident confirms St. Paul's words. A certain priest called Sapricios was good friends with a layman named Nikephoros. However, Due to some misunderstanding, their friendship turned into unquenchable hatred. Nikiphoros quickly recovered from this passion, and despite the fact that he was not at all despite the fact that he was not at fault, he accepted full responsibility for the misunderstanding and made every effort to effect a reconciliation with Sapricios. Unfortunately, however, Sapricios would not even hear any reconciliation. Shortly thereafter, a persecution flared up and Sapricios was arrested. <clears throat> they began interrogating and torturing him, but he did not deny his flesh, and thus it was decided that he would be executed. Nikiphoros, upon learning that Sapricios would tread the martyr's path, thought that this was this was the appropriate moment to realize his desire for reconciliation. He made an unexpected appearance before him, fell at his feet, and pleaded with him. Sapricios, however, did not even turn to look at his friend, who lay prostrate before him. At that moment, the grace of God abandoned him. When Sapricios arrived at the place of his execution, he appeared confused and asked why he was being put to death. He was told, because you do not make sacrifices to the gods. Then, in front of everyone, Sapricios denied Christ in order to save his life. The entreaties of the blessed Nikiphoros were in vain. Though he tried desperately to bring his friend back to his senses, Sapricios' soul, his, Sapricios's soul had become harder than stone. Then Nikiphoros confessed his face his faith in Christ before the crowd, bent his neck to the executioner's sword, and swiftly gained the martyr's crown. The Benefits of Forgiveness When a spiritual father pleads with someone in confession to forgive his fellow man, he often hears the following objection. But he has wronged me in so many ways. St. John Chrysostom responds to this sort of excuse in the following way. Do not say that he insulted, slandered, or caused you innumerable ills. They would, the more you say, the more you make him your benefactor, since he is giving you the opportunity to cleanse yourself of your sins. The greater his injustices towards you, the greater will be your remission of sins. St. John continues, Behold, all that you gain when you confront your enemies designs with mildness. <clears throat> Behold, all that you gain when you confront your enemies designs with mildness. First and foremost, you are absolved of your sins. Second, you acquire endurance and patience. Third, you become forbearing and charitable. Fourth, you are always free of uncontrollable anger and the sorrow that such rage causes. Thus, when we hate other people, we punish ourselves. On the other hand, when we love our fellow man, we benefit ourselves. Therefore, let us strive to hate no one, so that God may love us. And though we are responsible for countless sins, we may show compassion and have mercy. He may show compassion and have mercy upon us. Consider that when Christ was about to be crucified, he was joyful in himself, but he shed tears for those who crucified him. We must behave in the same way. The more we are harmed by others, the more we should grieve for those who cause us injury. When we forgive our enemies, 
a further favor is bestowed on us. We can approach the Immaculate Mysteries without censure. St. John Chrysostom emphasizes no one with enemies should approach the Holy Altar or partake of the Sacred Body of Christ. No person should come to receive Holy Communion if he has an enemy. Do you have an enemy? Do not come to take communion. Do you want to receive Holy Communion? Reconcile yourself with your enemy and then come. These are not my words, but the words of the Lord himself who was crucified for us. In order to reconcile you with God the Father, our Lord evaded neither slaughter nor the shedding of his own sacred blood, and you, to be reconciled with your fellow man, are not prepared either to speak to him or make the first move towards him? Hear what Christ has to say to those who, be who behave in such a way. If, therefore, you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there before the altar. First go your way and be reconciled to your brother and then offer your gift. Matthew five twenty three and 24. He did not say, wait for him to come to you, nor find someone who might intercede, nor plead with someone else. He said, you yourself run to him. With these words, the Lord wants to show us that he holds love in the highest esteem and that he considers it the greatest of all sacrifices. Without the sacrifice of love, he will not accept any others. St. Cosmos Atolos <clears throat> strongly insists on the virtue of love, saying, Let us both love, let us love both God and our brethren. By these means, God comes to gladden and brighten us and implants in our hearts eternal life so that we are happy here, as well as attaining eternal joy in paradise. No, do we lack love for our brothers and harbor hatred and enmity toward them? The cunning devil comes and embitters and poisons us and puts death in our soul so that we are miserable here and then go to hell to burn for all eternity. If we do not forgive our enemy, says the saint, all the good things we possess will be lost. Brethren, even if we do thousands upon thousands of good deeds, keep fasts, say prayers, give alms, even if we shed our blood for the love of Christ, we are found to lack these two loves for God and our neighbor, and harbor hate and ill feeling towards our fellows. All those good things that we have done are of the devil, and we are on our way to hell. Come now, you will say. Are we really heading for hell just because of the small amount of ill feeling toward our brethren when we have done so many good deeds? Yes, my beloved, just because of that, because that sort of enmity is devil's poison. Let us hasten to forgive the person who has injured us and be at peace with him, no matter how much we think he has wronged us. Thus, the peace of God shall flood our hearts, and as, tr as true children of the Heavenly Father who pardons all, we can entreat him with confidence to forgive us our transgressions. We shall say to God, Lord, I have done nothing good in my life. However, I forgive my enemies, and I beg you to forgive me my sins, because you are most gracious and a lover of mankind. We really need to start forgiving people and not hating people. And loving our enemies. <clears throat> All faithful Christians comprise the one body of Christ. Therefore, <clears throat> one of the faithful is member one of the faithful is a member of our own body. When one arm or leg is injured, we certainly do not amputate it, but with all care but with all care do whatever we can for its healing. We must deal in the same way with our brother who wrongs us, goaded as they are by the devil. Just as we treat 
a part of our own body that is sick and painful, so must we treat a spiritually sick brother who, under the devil's influence, wrongs us or curses us and causes us pain. A certain saint says, he who has a compassionate heart affords he who has a compassionate heart affords thereby joy and benefit first to himself and then to his neighbor in exactly the opposite way malice wears down and torments the one possessed by it we imitate god the greatest good bestowed on him who loves his enemy is that he becomes similar to god christ said love your enemies and you will become like your heavenly father love therefore your enemy and become similar to God, says St. John Chrysostom. Let us examine a little further how cultivating the virtue of love for our enemies can help us attain likeness to God. He who wants to imitate the Lord follows his command. Therefore be merciful, even as your Father is also merciful. Luke 6.36 Because there is nothing that makes us more like unto God than forgiving those who do evil and wrong us. In Christ's Sermon on the Mount, he referred to the Mosaic commandment, an eye for an eye, and spoke of love as the perfection of the commandment. Love your enemies, bless those that curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you. Matthew 5, 38, 44. <clears throat> so John Chrysostom says, with regard to this teaching of Christ's, do you see how many steps he has climbed and how he has led us up to the very summit of virtue? First, never be the first to wrong someone. Never. Two. Second, never seek equal retaliation. Third, do not inflict the same injury that yourself suffered, but remain calm. Fourth, Offer yourself up to injustice. Fifth, be willing to take on much more than is demanded by the person injuring you. Sixth, do not hate the one who has injured you. Seventh, moreover, love that person. Eighth, do good to him. Ninth, and pray to God for him. Do you see the magnitude of this spirituality? This is the reason why. It has a glorious reward, because the command given was so important, requiring a brave soul and great zeal. He established a, for, uh, he established a reward for it, which up until that time had not been contained in the Beatitudes. That is, that we would become like God, in so far as is humanly possible. Christ said that the love that defines us as children of God is the love we have for our enemies. Love your enemies, and you will be children of the Most High. Luke 6.35 A person who recites the Lord's Prayer calls God Father, while adding that he has forgiven those who have trespassed against him. If he has not forgiven nor loved his enemies, then he speaks falsely, and has no right to call God Father. Hardcore, man. We gotta love our enemies. To love those who have wronged us is authentic love. And it is that show and it is this that shows us to be imitators of Christ. We delivered himself who delivered himself to be crucified in order to save us who had become his enemies. St. Paul the Apostle invites all those who want to imitate God to copy this extreme love. Be imitators of God as beloved children. Walk in love even as Christ also loved us and gave himself up for us. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Since we are God's beloved children, we are duty-bound to imitate our Heavenly Father. Thus we must adhere to the kind of love that moved the Master Christ to deliver himself up for our sake. Therefore, when we do good to our enemies rather than our friends, we must become true imitators of Christ our Master. Since it was for the sake of his enemies that he delivered himself up. 
Christ's love extended to all people, even to those who crucified him. When the unjust judges condemned him to death, he accepted the verdict in silence. And when the penalty was carried out and he was nailed to the wood of the cross, not only did he not stop loving his murderers, he even besought his father not to punish them for what they had dared to do to his only begotten son. He did not merely beseech... He even apologized on their behalf with words of love and mercy. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Luke twenty three thirty four, and so Saint Nicodemus, and so says Saint Nicodemus, when you have an enemy who has wronged or abused you, remember the Lord's words and forgive your enemy with all your heart. These words spoken by the Lord. On the cross, reveal his infinite long-suffering. St. Gregory of Nyssa writes, Shackles and floggings, blows to the cheeks, a face covered in spit, a back crisscrossed by beatings, an irreverent court, the cruel verdict, the soldier's mockery, sarcasm and cursing, the nails, gall and vinegar and all those hideous things that were done to our guiltless lord as repayment for us for his many and varied benefactions how how did he confront those who did all these things to him father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing could he not have brought down the heavens upon their heads or caused a rupture in the earth to swallow up his slanderers? But he suffered all these things with gentleness and forbearance, and by his own example ordained that you should practice forbearance in your life. St. Simeon, the new theologian, explains how to imitate divine love. Do good to your enemies and love them like friends, like a, like real benefactors. Pray for all who want to harm you. Love everyone equally from your heart and offer your love every day for the benefit of all. These things will make you a follower of the Lord and will distinguish you as a true icon of the Creator and a model of divine perfection. <sighs> wow, man. Wisdom. Arise. How do the saints love? Saint Nicodemus the Hagiorite writes that it was from the words Christ said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, that Saint Stephen the proto martyr learned to say to those who stoned him, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. All the saints, as imitators and followers of Christ, likewise learned to forgive their enemies through hearkening to these words. All of the saints showed forbearance while suffering and did not repay the evil done to them, nor were they moved to anger. Though they were murdered, stoned, burned, drowned, or sawn in two, yet they were forbearing towards their tormentors and prayed that they might be forgiven. Love opens up the way to sainthood. In like manner, when the saints become perfect, they all attain to this perfection, and by the superabundant outpouring of their love and compassion upon all men, they resemble God. The saints aspire to possess the following quality in order to be like God. Perfect love towards their neighbor. When a man acquires this love to together with it, he is clad with God himself. Let us refer to some specific examples from the lives of the saints. Saint Dionysios of Zakynthos was a vivid example of supreme love. He was abbot of the monastery in Strophades. His 